Hey folks, Agent CEO here, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the method and tools of setting up a digital signage for your ministry, your storefront, or wherever that you can use digital signage. So let's go. Hey folks, Agent CEO here. It's the first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by. And on this channel, we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. So what is digital signage? Digital signage is where you go to certain stores and you see it. You got a TV on the wall somewhere and they have, whether it be announcements, menus, um, slides, videos, information, weather, whatever type of information that you want to display. So just from a church standpoint, um, just consider it like it's an interact. Well, I don't want to say interactive, but it's a digital um, bulletin board. So instead of having people stick the little stickies into the cork board with different announcements and flyers, you can make a digital version of it and put it up there. You can also use this instead of having a flyer or a banner that some churches might have. You may be able to just make a digital version of it. Um, um, and then put it on the TV that's going to be displayed. Now, I've used this multiple times with restaurants, um, businesses. I actually have one that I'm still doing using this same method for a barbershop. And I've recently set something up at St. Paul Church of God in Christ. And a lot of y'all wanted to know how to do it. So we're this is a part of Signs and Wonders Ministry. This is another thing that we're going to be adding to their entrance. And this is going to be the digital signage for their announcement board right when you walk in. So what I use is Yodec. This is a website that um, honestly is really, really great <laughs> because I found them and they really don't charge Anything for the service, I'll show you how you can get it for free. But if we cut over here just to see what the app is. So here is the website, yodec.com, an unbeatably easy digital signage. And you can actually get started for free. Um, you do need to have your own equipment. You can buy that yourself, which is what I did. Link is down below on what you need to do this. But it's going to be very, very straightforward. Um, now, we're going to be leveraging the Raspberry Pi. This is a mini computer that I've used many times before, and they're even offering a free one if you go with an annual plan. So let me get the pricing stuff out of the way first. Um, for each screen, it starts at $8 a month. Um, it can go up to 9 for each screen and everything like that. And... Um, you know, that's if you want to have multiple displays, but we're only going to use one. And if you only use one, guess what? It's free. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. Um, that is with the contingency that you get your own um, Raspberry Pi. I just got this one. These are really hard to get now um, because of um, the pandemic and everything like that. But normally these used to go for like seventy five dollars. Now they're going for double that price. $130, but once you get it, hey, it's yours, and you can use it any way you want to. Um, so if we cut back over here, the main thing we're going to do is we're going to set up everything, um, which is pretty straightforward. Let's go back here to our home screen, and we're going to click on Start for Free. We're going to make an account here. And then um, we'll go through this. So let me go ahead and register real quick. And then I'll show you the back end of where everything goes. All right. So got registered here. And what will you use the screens for? You know, um, I don't know what I will put it. Internal corporate content. I guess I'll do that or other. Not like this is going to determine anything. I guess they just want to get some information to determine you know, a case study on who's using their product. Industry is going to be place of worship, your role. I am going to be an IT professional. How many screens are you planning on using? We're just going to use one right now. And you could have skipped this, but, you know, whatever. All right. 
I'm going to skip the tour because I've actually gone through this before. So here's your dashboard that's going to interact. This is the website that you would log into to maintain and do any changes to the upload content to your um, digital display. So right here, if you went with them, an annual plan, they will send you one of these Raspberry Pis for free. Um, you could buy one from them for 79 um, plus shipping. So, you know, honestly, that might be cheaper than going through Amazon. But hey, I went through Amazon or set up your own DIY player using a Raspberry Pi. This is what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and click on that. Let me take this out of full screen. And we're just going to follow the steps. The main thing is we just need to download the software and we're going to in, in download a program that's going to inject all of that into this card. So we have the recommendations of Raspberry Pi 4. There are, this is the latest version. Um, they recommend the amount of memory. Uh, yeah, and a SD card for a certain size. Um, recommended 16 gigs. I've done it as low as eight, but again, 16 is fine. Um, yeah, all right. So first we're gonna do is download the image that has the whole Raspberry Pi software on here. And then we're gonna download Etcher. This is a program that will allow you to write to the SD card. And that's it. So after that, we're gonna come back and get this all done. So we can close this part. And now let's go to the overhead. Let's see what's inside the box and show you everything involved with that. Alrighty, we are here. This is, um, I'll have a link to the one, the exact one that I bought on Amazon, but it has everything included that we need. And I like these because any fairly new TV has a USB um, plug-in that provides power. So you can always have this on the back of the TV and it's just going to pull power from the TV. So you don't need to get anything new. All right. So we got a bunch of stuff here. So here is the Raspberry. And this one only has two gigs of RAM. Boo. Thought I ordered the one that had more. But this should still work. If not, <laughs> we got to go get another one. All right. So here is our Raspberry Mini computer here. And I know this actually will work because I've used something. Actually, I've used a, a older model and they work perfectly fine on these. Also comes with a what's it, micro HDMI to HDMI cable here. The older ones actually used to be a full size HDMI. So that I'm glad this actually comes with one. All right, we'll plug it right over there and it's USB-C right here for our power. All this stuff out the way. Got our power supply, but like I said, I'm not gonna use this. Actually, wow, this one actually has an on and off switch because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have an on and off. Once you get power, it just goes on. So you never know. Um, well, now in my setup, I'm going to keep it, just pull power from the TV. So once the TV is on, this will get powered on. Or you might not even turn the power off on the TV at all. Nice little startup guide. We're not going to use that. A bag. Definitely don't need that. Maybe that's why this one costs so much. It gave all these extras to not use them. All right. And then this should be the case to hold this whole thing. All right. Actually has a fan in there. So that's cool. All 
All right. So let's go ahead and get everything assembled. There are certain grooves that will match where the stuff goes. So set this in here to line up. Snaps right in place. Doesn't come out from there. Now I need to see which one has the which one of these I plug in for power. But we also have some heat sinks. And I'll probably come back here and change out another one if I have these in the wrong place. But again, I think with that fan being on there, I think we'll be fine and good to go. All right, that's a USB card reader. There's our, this is actually a 32 gig, which is good. And this is actually a Samsung. These are kind of the ones that I use for my cameras, which I know are pretty good. So we're going to load this up and we're going to take this and load that on the computer over here. I need to find which one that I plug this into for power. Connect the fan to your to your Pi by connecting the black pin to number 14 and then the red cable to pin number one. So pin number one is right here. All right. And let's count one, two. Well, it's going to be on the odd side. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Should be right there. All right. Joy. Now, with everything done, let's go ahead and plug in some power just to see if we get anything. Hmm. Not getting nothing. So, make sure I didn't put these wrong. There. Let's do it again. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. All right, let's plug it in now. Did we get it spinning? All right, there we go. So we got the right way now. Yay! Now let's close this all up. And I think we're good to go. Now, they do have some rubberized feet over here, but that's not going to be a big issue because this is going to sit behind the monitor. So now that yeah, we got this whole assembly, and I'm going to plug this in so you can see this through the ATEM when we start getting everything set up. Now, you, will, uh, you don't need a keyboard for this because we'll see. We'll show you how it all works. Let's get this plugged into, all right, got that plugged in. And now let's cut over back over to the computer and we have all of the other software downloaded so that we can get everything running. So I already have a card reader on my computer so that I can actually access this. So got that plugged in. And let's head over to the computer and get everything installed. All right, we're back over here on my desktop. We have the image that we're going to use for that contains all of the Raspberry Pi, well, the Yodex software, the whole operating system, everything. We're going to go ahead and extract that to my messy desktop here. 
And then I already had Etcher installed. So let's go ahead and well, I thought I had it installed. Okay, I don't have it installed. So let's go ahead and install it. Not a big program. All right, so here we go. Please make sure that you pick the right drive when you do this. So let's select our file. I'll put that on the desktop, the Yodex software right there. Select my target. That is the 32 gig card. I want to make sure that I have everything. I'm not, I don't have anything else accidentally plugged in here. So that's a part of this drive right here. It's split. It's partitioned. This is actually going to wipe this out and make it one singular drive. So that's fine. All right. We just do select and flash. Going to get permissions because it is making some hardware changes. So I'll be back once this is done. All righty. We're all done. So now let's go ahead and take this out and we're going to hook this up to the Raspberry Pi and install it inside of there and then get everything started up. All right. So be mindful of how you hook this up. It goes right there, upside down. And that's it. So now, let's go ahead and give it some juice. And then, let's see what we get. All right, so it is starting up right now. And, all right, it's reading the drive. And this is just a booting sequence that you're always going to see. And I guess I need an ethernet cable as well too. And now it's just doing the boot up sequence. So just got to be patient for that to be done. Now what's going to happen is each one of these players gives you a authentication code um, that I am going to have blurred here. Um, that is how I've registered this with your account. Once it has the internet connection, it goes from there. Now, Based on, if y'all have been watching any of my videos on the install that I'm doing at Signs and Wonders, there is no networking there. We're going to turn on the Wi-Fi for it to, that's how it's going to have its signal connected there. And the Wi-Fi is more than fast enough. You just don't want to have, try and put anything crazy on the content there. Um, as in like, if you put long videos and stuff like that, you gotta realize it downloads to this Raspberry Pi. So just be mindful of that. So we're just gonna let this keep going through its boot up sequence, doing some updates, which should be pretty brand new because we just ran it from there. But, um, all right, there we go. So let me move out of the way here. And this registration code is what we're gonna go into on our website to make sure we get everything embedded. I'm actually downloading the code to the access <laughs> to the signs and wonder stuff um, right now. All right, so let's cut back over to our desktop. And now what we're gonna do is um, add a monitor. So we're gonna go ahead and go to add and it is a Yodec player. And we're going to say um, entrance TV. We'll call it that. We're going to put the registration code, which is the number that they show on the Raspberry Pi. They now just boot it up. And we don't have a schedule. Um, this is where we can put it on the network the Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna actually put this on here now so that when I disconnect it from my network, I'll be able to connect it to their stuff. So we got that saved. Now let's go to our sound. All of that's gonna be fine. Um, location, it's gonna auto detect once I'm there, so I don't have to worry about that. Status, eh, 
all that's not needed. Let's go ahead and just save and make sure we link up to that system. And now that we have it, let's push to players. And let's cut back over to the screen. And we want to see what will happen. And boom, it's now linked because all the registration stuff went away. And it says it doesn't know the state, but it is there. So if we go here. Okay, actually, I went away too quick. <laughs> and right when I went to it went away. It was actually saying it was downloading media. So it's there on the screen now. So let's jump back over here now. And as you can see, we're online. We're not displaying nothing, but it's online. All right. So let's go back to our dashboard. And as you can see, we have one monitor that's online. One is registered and it doesn't cost anything. Once we start adding another monitor, that's when it's going to charge. And as you see, it's pulling. Um, it's not close, but it's <laughs> trying to um, locate where I am um, here to show that as well. So, all right. So let's go through everything. We have media. This is where you can upload images and everything to your Raspberry Pi. So this is going to be the web interface that people can do. So if you want static images, you can do this here. So for example, I'm going to load up their wallpaper, which I believe I still have. on my system. Yeah, so they have their wallpaper. So let's make, let's add this real quick. And just drag that over. And then you could put this on how long duration you want this to show. By default, I'm gonna say 15, I believe that's seconds. Yep. So I'll just go ahead and save that. And it is, this is the logo, the church's logo. All right. So the idea, this is going to be on the main screen. I might want to do this as a full wallpaper. So I'll come back and do that later, but we're just going to show how this works. All right. So we got this here. Now, if we want to do videos, we could embed this here. Now you can add YouTube videos here as well too. So let's go to YouTube. And let's add, let's add the playlist for um, Signs and Wonders, for the whole install that I'm doing here. So it's right here. So let's go ahead and copy this URL. And YouTube video. And I don't know... All right, no, it won't let me do the playlist. I have to do an individual video. So let's do this. All right, now you could add a live stream as well here. So that, that would be kind of cool. Um, but you have other videos that you want as well too. But I'm just going to add that. So boom, there we go. Let's save that. Oh, required. I don't know. Um, what if? Give it a title name. All right. So we got that added. Then you could add audio as well, too. You could add documents. And you can even add web pages in here. Really straightforward. All right. So now that's your media. Now you do have widgets as well too. So you can have different stuff. You can have your time. Um, let's go to widgets and see what else that you got here. You got a bunch under here, date and time, world clock, calendar events. So you can link this to a calendar if you want, make it look all nice and pretty. Um, daily weather, hourly weather, Google calendar, which I would really like that. Um, Cause if you have events, it can just pull from there directly. So if it's linked to the calendar, as you add stuff, you don't have to interact with this. It's going to pull. You can do traffic, um, online slideshow, QR codes, 
I mean, they have a bunch of stuff um, that you can use. Facebook, posters, birthday notifications. It's a bunch. So I'm not seeing anything right now that I would want to do in this setup, but it does. It's good that you have a lot of options here. Um, I think at um, the barbershop that I do, I have the local time and weather that I have displayed on there. All right. Now we're going to go to our playlist. This is just like a playlist you would think how you would list everything on here of how you want it to um, certain events to be played. Say you want this to be played a playlist um, during Sunday or announcements or throughout the week. You can make different playlists for a different set of time or just one unified one. So I'm just going to say um, do a classic one. And I'm going to call this um, announcements. And now it has everything that we have that we've uploaded, all of the media that's here. So I'm going to have the logo uploaded and then I'm going to bring in the what if episode. And that's what's going to play on this screen. All right. We do have some playback options. We want to sync playback. Do we want to randomize so it makes it different? What's the transition that we want to do? Do we want to add a black gap in between? We want to do an image transfer, you know, and you could preview it if you want to. I'm just going to save it. And there's my playlist. All right. We are still not playing anything because we don't have anything linked to that screen. Because like right now, if I go to what the Raspberry Pi is showing right now, this is what's showing. No content assigned to player. And that is what we're getting ready to do right now. We also have layouts. So you can change the layout of how everything shows. So like say, um, let's look at. Uh, let's look at this layout. This one here. So you could put something like this. And that's the layout, and you'll have a greeting, which is really cool because when I originally did this, they didn't have layouts here. You had to make your own. So I like the fact that they have some included. You could put this in a portrait type of layout if you rotated the TV that way. Full screen layout is just, <laughs> it takes up the full screen. This is how we're going to use ours as well, too. Um, and I'm wondering what's the difference between these? Oh, it's just a different image. Okay, so I guess you could put a background in here as well. Place of worship, and open hours. This is cool as well, too. Um, kind of corny image right there, but <laughs> whatever. So you could put your schedule, the church schedule on here if you wanted to. All right. Now, another thing we have is schedules. You can set this Raspberry Pi to only show at a given time, like the barbershop. I have the TV stays on. So when they're not open, I have it on my schedule to show a certain slide which says we're currently closed. And um, when it's open, then it changes to that time frame. It's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. So, like, for example, um, like here, it says it's open. Let's look at this one. You can set a calendar of how everything is going to be done, the content that's going to go with it. And that's kind of bland. So let's go ahead and make one. Um, add schedule. And I'm going to say, I don't know, church schedule. I don't know. Um, so let's add an entry over here. And turned off. The monitor will be, will be turned off. So I can say at this time, I want it to repeat weekly. And there is no end time. So it will go, um, or no. Yeah, I want this to end at a certain time. Oh, no, this is a repeat. Excuse me. I want this to repeat indefinitely. Um, so we can come in here and say, what time do we want it to start? And say, we want the screen to come on at, I don't know, 8, 8 a.m. And you could click on the clock here if you want to enter it that way. And we want it to start displaying some. Actually, no, let's change that to seven. No, nah, eight is fine. And we want it to stop doing that at 830. All right. And it will stay off. And then the next content, and that's just for that day. 
and could have said daily. And then it would do this every single day or just one day. But I'm going to switch this back to weekly because I, I am on a Saturday right now. Um, you know, so you can set this to say, hey, on Mondays, the barbershop is closed. Um, if the church is not open at a certain time, you can put the church schedule so that people can see it. Because this TV is going to be displayed right from the main door. So when you walk up to the door, you'll be able to see this on the wall. So you can set the schedule to do anything when you want it to turn on, when you want it to turn off, when you want it to show certain stuff. So if you're doing this in the service, maybe you want to circle, cycle the announcements the entire time. But then when the service is going on, maybe you want to cut over over to the live stream and share it on that TV or something else. So, I mean, you can get really granular with this and let me know if you want to go, want me to go more in detail on the schedule. Honestly, I don't need a schedule for what they're going to be doing. All right. So now let's go back to our monitors. And as you see, it's online. Let's go in here now and we need to assign something to this. So right now we get a view of what that screen is showing right now. We're going to, we can assign it to a schedule. I'm going to keep it empty. And then content, I'm going to select the playlist and I'm going to do the announcements. And we hit OK. And now we're going to push to that screen. Yes, I'm sure I want to push. So now if we cut over to the screen, once it finished pushing, Let's see what it do. I'm going to move my screen out the way. It should say in the lower bottom part of the screen that it is downloading the information. <clears throat> yep, you see that downloading at the bottom left? I mean, bottom right, excuse me. So we just got to be patient. And then once it's been uploaded, and again, the beauty of this, as long as it's on the network, which this is relatively close to the access point of where this is going to be installed in the church, it's always going to be on. Um, you got to make sure if we're pulling power that we want to make sure that it is, um, if we're pulling power from the TV, the TV stays on or we can use that power cable and then it will always be on. Now, this is the one thing we need to be mindful of on using YouTube videos. I think it's trying to download all of that. I don't think it's just playing it. Um, maybe I should have did a shorter video. Or maybe get rid of that completely. I think I might do that. Because that was a long video. All right. So I just removed the, um, the YouTube video. And I just made another push to the screen. Which should just be the church's logo. All right. Did an update again. See, that went a lot faster. And there we go. Now, uh, I guess the logo was transparent. So I need to make this into an actual wallpaper so that you can actually see it because there is no background here. So let me change that real quick. All right. So I just made this really quick. And let's cut back over here. And I'm going to upload this changed image here. I'm going to delete this one. And then I'm going to add the wallpaper formatted one. By default, I'm going to put this for 15 again. All right, we got that done. We're going to go to our playlist because we need to update that as well. Here's that image here, and I'll add a current time and just a few things so we can see how everything flows. All right, let's save. 
And I'm in the way. Now we're going to push the players. Yes. Let's cut back over here to the screen. And we're going to see that. Now you see, even though I deleted that image, it was still here because it was downloaded to the Raspberry Pi. And I keep getting in the way. There's your downloading sign. And now, let's see the change. There we go. So now that would be, I might want to even put welcome there, um, but that would be the logo that people see on the TV. It's going to hold for 15 seconds, and then it's going to cut because I didn't do a transition in between these. Next should be current time. All right. That's actually going to stay up there for 20 seconds. Then it's going to go through a couple of random images that I grabbed. So you could play announcements here, videos. Just make sure that the content is small because it does have to download to the Raspberry Pi. All right. So really straightforward. All right. Now, I like this because if you were trying to do announcements a different way, you would really need a full computer to run to this, to have this going on constantly. Um, with the Raspberry Pi, it doesn't take that much power. I mean, you see how tiny that is. That can just be put right on the ledge, right behind the TV. I've even Velcroed it to the back of the television and it stays out of sight. You can mount it to the wall. You know, it's out of sight and it's not really a big computer. And then the fact that this web based, you can just log in with the credentials and then you can link it to whichever um, upload, whatever content that you want to do from the comfort of your home. So, again, that's how I, I know I dragged this out. But again, a lot of y'all wanted to know the entire process. That's from beginning to the end, how to get everything done. And then now it's like you can st make it as simple as how I did it. Just uploading vid videos, images, whatever. Be mindful of the length of your YouTube video. Um, I thought it would just stream it, but it looks like they made a change and it's downloading. I used this before when I was doing a live stream. So it was streaming it live. Maybe that's less intensive um, than actually running a video on it. But that's the whole process of uh, digital signage using Yodec for completely for free outside of you just buying the equipment. Um, link is down below to the Raspberry Pi that I used. But honestly, based on the prices, go with Yodec um, and you can get one at a more reasonable price, um, $79. Um, for that, you will have to do a, a year subscription. But Honestly, if you want to save, I'll have a link to the Amazon one. You can just buy that outright, follow the steps I do, and then you don't have to pay Yodec a simple, um, a single thing as long as you have one screen. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ, and we will see you on the next video. Later. <music>